Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here Sunday now, the 22nd of September 2024. Got some important stuff for you here today. It looks like we're going to get development from this Central American gyre, maybe even a little sooner than we were anticipating. It's coming together right in front of our eyes. So we're going to discuss that, some of the latest trends in satellites, so the real-time stuff. And then, of course, what the forecast is showing, two of the models here, the GFS and the Euro, starting to align. The Euro actually coming over to the GFS side of things, indicating we could have significant development of this system moving into the central Gulf of Mexico and then eventually possibly towards the northeast Gulf of Mexico coastline later this week in a potentially serious situation shaping up. So we have to start really watching this very, very closely. And at the end of today's update, another reminder of what we're going to be starting tomorrow. Pretty cool new stuff just in time for this system. Uh, some new announcements here, some things coming up at the Hurricane Track, um, whatever you call this, our little community here. All right. So let's start off first with a look at the National Hurricane Center homepage. This is the two-day outlook, our area down here, not quite tagged. An invest area, but that's coming, I'm certain of it. And I think this would be 97L, if I'm not mistaken. It is not yet, at least not at the time I'm putting this video together. But 40% chance of development over the next two days, 80% in the longer term. And then this one is 96L, which really did look like a tropical cyclone yesterday a sheared tropical cyclone. Maybe it gets added later on. So if this does develop, as expected, it will get the H name, which will be Helene. So get used to it. Then if we expand this out to the next seven days, we see another system coming off Africa today that should start to try to develop out here over the deep tropics in the coming days after that. And then, honestly, the entire basin here is going to get really favorable as a more pronounced Madden Julian oscillation comes through just a fancy way of saying we're going to have a lot more upward motion a lot more thunderstorm activity a much more favorable environment in the atmosphere because we know that the water temperatures all throughout this area are plenty warm we've been harping on that for months now the atmosphere looks like it's going to finally start to cooperate after a few weeks of some kind of a weird funk we've all talked about that that's getting ready to change and we need to make sure we are prepared for what could be coming. Looking at the satellite animation this afternoon, I mean, here you go. Clearly you can see the convection here starting to the east of Honduras and Nicaragua in that favored area. Climatologically speaking, and just the overall gyre that's sitting down here, this is exactly what we look for when we talk about something forming out of that Central American gyre phenomenon. We're seeing more in the way of energy, of vorticity focusing down here. The deeper thunderstorms, it's all happening. You got Jamaica over here, probably kind of showery off and on there. Our friends in the Cayman Islands starting to uh, experience that as well. And then this system looks like it's going to come together over the next couple of days and then move through the Yucatan Channel and then somewhere up into this vicinity after that. Exactly where remains to be seen. That is why we have to watch this very, very closely. And that is why, I might as well start dropping this in now, uh, part of the reason why I'm going to be doing a couple of new things starting tomorrow. First, and I mentioned this yesterday, I'm going to do something called a quick update. Just when something catches my attention, and I think you should know about it, I'm just going to record a very quick video, 90 seconds or less, and put it on Twitter and our, our YouTube shorts and over on our Instagram. Very easy to do, and I can do it anywhere. So I'm going to start that tomorrow as well. And then tomorrow, and I'm thinking probably 10 a.m. Eastern time, I'm going to do our first live hurricane outlook and discussion. And it'll probably go 20, 30 minutes at the most. Spend some time just kind of showing you what I'm looking at as I get prepared for this video that I will do later in the afternoon. Sort of a live editorial meeting. A lot of the, anybody that's ever worked in network news, you know exactly what I'm talking about or even local news, they, they get a meeting in the morning and they talk to the different people and they figure out what are the stories they're going to follow for the day. I kind of do that when I'm looking at all these different tabs you see up there. I just want to do it live with you guys so I can show you what I'm thinking, what I'm going to be looking at, and then we'll go to social media and see what questions and whatnot that you all might have. And we can do that from our Patreon, our Discord, which are connected, and then YouTube chat as well, maybe even on Twitter. And I just think that'll make it much more inclusive 
that we're all kind of looking at the same thing. And then when I when I get to do this video tomorrow afternoon, uh, the recorded video, the basis of it will be what we all kind of discussed at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right? So that's going to be exciting. Live tomorrow, 10 a.m. on YouTube. So, yeah, you got to make sure you have those notifications enabled. And uh, we'll start it up. It'll be about a two- or three-minute little splash screen or thumbnail or whatever, title card. And then I'll pop on, and it'll be just informal, just chit-chatting about... What do we got? What do we got out there? What are we looking at as I prepare for the afternoon update? And certainly a big part of that topic tomorrow will be this, soon to be 97L. All right, moving on along. The all-important vorticity. This is what it looked like yesterday. This is really interesting here. There's the 21st of September, so that's yesterday. There's the energy down there. It was, you know, somewhat noticeable. But look what happens when we move it forward almost 24 hours not quite, but almost a market increase. There's definitely been an increase down there, and it's starting to come together. We can see that in the shower and thunderstorm activity. This just shows us that, yes, there is uh, that low-level vorticity. So the energy is trying to bundle and come together, and we're going to be able to track this very feature right here as everything sort of starts to coalesce right up here in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands, between the Cayman Islands and Cancun. And then as it tracks potentially through the Yucatan Channel, maybe the center of circulation when it does develop, nips the east, uh, western end of Cuba or the northeast part of the Yucatan, really doesn't matter. Once it gets past there, it's probably all systems go for this to develop further, and the major models are really starting to catch on to that as we go forward. And the upper level winds, kind of hard to see what's what, but uh, down here there's Nicaragua, Honduras right there, the Yucatan and the upper level winds quite favorable over that area and I don't see any reason why this won't start to go and uh, we're gonna have to watch this very closely and I'll kinda show you why uh, as we move forward here these are some of those puzzle pieces by the way in terms of why we really need to watch this I mean clearly the highest upper ocean heat content values are all through here but our area that we're watching is right in there and the upper ocean heat content in case you're not familiar with that the ocean needs to be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius, but not just at the surface. It needs to have depth, that very warm water. And the deeper the warm water extends, the higher the upper ocean heat content is. Because the hurricane comes along and blows everything around and churns it all up, and it just churns up more warm water when the 80 degree isotherm, as we call it, is fairly deep. So the deeper the warm water the higher the ocean heat content values are and the more intense a hurricane can become because it's literally whipping the ocean into this mist that's unlike anything you've ever seen. Uh, very few, well, some of the sail drones have captured it and some of the recon planes and a few ships at sea, but it literally feeds itself, especially in the intense cores of these hurricanes, liquefying into a, I guess it's just very difficult to describe but that kind of upper ocean heat content continuously feeds that heat engine, whipping the, um, the latent heat right out of the ocean and into the core. Those are the uh, TCHP, or the Tropical Cyclone Heat Potential Values. This is the actual sea surface temperature values. These are in degrees Celsius. And remember, I told you it's about 26 C, or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Science is in metric, of course. So there's 29, right up there to the coast. There's 30 Celsius, you know, so we're talking mid-80s to almost upper 80s. And then you have these different variable colors here in the gradient. Um, very warm. That's all we need to know. Very, very warm to support an intense hurricane and all that that implies. Heavy, heavy rainfall, the potential for storm surge impacts. We are starting to get concerned for our friends all along the Gulf Coast up here. Don't know exactly where but we know hurricanes are not a point on a map, and we really have to start watching this closer and closer as the week begins. Another part of the puzzle, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, I talked about it. This is the Ensemble Forecast System, and its uh, rendering of what, you know, forecast of what the MJO is going to be doing. This is where we are. This is where it's forecast to go. It's forecast to amplify uh, into the phases that favor the Western Hemisphere and Africa, so bottom line, when I see that, that says lots of rising motion in the atmosphere, allowing deep thunderstorms to develop, allowing light winds in the upper atmosphere. 
the euro is not nearly as amplified, and for whatever reason, it just takes a hike into what we call the null phase, to where there's almost no MJO activity. That's the euro ensemble mean, if I, if I remember correctly. A lot of the other members, though, are more amplified, so we'll have to see. Uh, but we're, we're watching it right in front of our eyes. You just go look at the satellite imagery again over here, and yeah, there is more convection now, more convection in the east pack, and this will eventually spread throughout the Atlantic Basin, giving us a two- to three-week period where we could see quite the burst of activity going forward. So what do the models show? The models are certainly reacting to all of this. Uh, this is the GFS. Let me use red here to make everything stand out. Uh, blue. Blue will actually be better because that will contrast against everything. So this is the 850 millibar chart. I show you this because I'm looking to see that right there. And um, this is six hours out. So this is valid pretty much right now. So the GFS is saying that the vorticity signature should look something like this right now. Now, unfortunately, the vorticity signature over here, this particular product, only goes out to 15 UTC, so it hasn't quite updated yet. I'll refresh it. Uh, but I would imagine that this has come off just a little bit more, so it's a pretty close match. Uh, it's, it's good to see that, that we know there is reliability, that the GFS isn't just making stuff up. There is energy down here. There is vorticity down at the lower levels. The, in, the energy is starting to get bundled. GFS shows that six hours out. We can go back to the initial, and um, I think the initialization right at 12Z handled it pretty well. So let's move this forward. Let's just go out 24 hours, and this is pretty revealing, all right? In 24 hours, tomorrow morning, when I get up, starting to get the kids ready for school, all that kind of stuff, we should see a market improvement in the cloud structure, the vorticity signature, all of that. And that's just 24 hours down the road. All right, so if we get up tomorrow and this is not there, and it's still just weak and diffuse, we know the GFS has blown it, that the reality does not match the model. Looking at the upper levels just to see how that looks, I mean, that's as textbook as you can draw it. Very, very favorable upper level conditions. So at 24 hours, it certainly makes sense. 48 hours, and when we go to, you know, practically a tropical cyclone at that point, if we look at the lower wind field, 10 meters and so forth, you know, you're talking low 990 millibars. Uh, you know, in 48 hours, the GFS ramps this up very quickly. And one thing I want to show you, this is important. The upper ocean heat content where that happens is extremely high. No doubt about it. In fact, the actual sea surface temperatures in that area are also very high, 31 Celsius, right where that's happening. So, you know, either the GFS is just completely wrong, or it's finally latched onto this. It's got, and this is, by the way, the fourth run in a row that we've seen this kind of development. So I think it's finally getting consistent. So that's 48 hours, then you take it out to 72 hours, and we have a small but potent tropical cyclone threading the Yucatan Channel, and look at this, look at that band right there. To me, that's really impressive. It's going to have that big shrimp look. You'll see, and, and we'll be able to know that in three days, Wednesday morning. I'll be already on my way, if not getting ready to set up equipment. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, I mean, the model is saying what the reality should look like, and we'll be able to match that up. And when I see that kind of a tail there, in the model guidance like that, that is very revealing. We go back and look at the upper levels of the atmosphere. And, I mean, again, it is just ideally positioned. you got the outflow channel sitting over here. Your inflow is over here. That's what that band was that I just showed you. Well ventilated with divergent flow up to the north. The upper level low sitting over here. Yeah. I don't, you know, again, <laughs> the model is broken. And I say that because we don't know the future. This is what the model is showing, but this is just a model. It's a simulation, right? So that's uh, three days. At day four, it really starts to become become problematic. A very intense hurricane approaching the Florida Panhandle, and then by day five, not even. It makes landfall near Apalachicola at 108 hours, and we're looking at a potentially very intense hurricane Unless, and this is the problem here, unless the model is just not right. And I don't know. I don't, and people can speculate. You're going to see that on social media. People are going to say the GFS doesn't handle things and the Euro does better. 
Well, let's see. Let me show you something. Let's talk about how the Euro does better while we're on that subject. So the Euro for today, unfortunately, I don't have because I want to compare them easily on tidbits here. So I do not have the, um, the resolution that we have with the GFS. It's just the way it is. We only get every 24 hours. So the Euro, which was showing, let me just go back um, one day. Let's just go back a day. This is what the Euro was showing yesterday. It was way over there, north of the Yucatan, kind of weak, sprawling, sloppy system. Still impacts. Don't want to ever dismiss that. And it made landfall there somewhere, yeah, maybe near Mobile or something, right? Uh, at um, Saturday morning. So that was the Euro just 24 hours ago. Let's take, take a look at the Euro 48 hours ago and see what it was showing on the 12Z run. It was even more to the west and more sprawling. So let's fast forward to today. And remember what I just showed you with the GFS there, right? So now let's take the Euro for today. Oh, it almost exactly matches the GFS. So either both of the best global models in the world are wrong, or there is the potential for a significant hurricane to come into the northeast Gulf of Mexico. And this particular frame of the euro, remember I've only got 24-hour increments, 987 millibars, which normally that's a hurricane, matches very closely what the GFS is showing at that same time frame, but the GFS is obviously a lot stronger. We don't know which one's going to be right, but we do know that both models are showing something very similar in that a hurricane exists at around the same model time. All right, so keep that in mind. So let's just take it, yeah, that's 96 hours, the GFS at 96 hours. There we go. Now it's literally apples to apples, right on the money geographically, vastly different intensity wise. We'll see. This is why we have to watch this stuff so very closely. You can't discount it. The one thing that I do find intriguing, it's a rather small circulation, and these small ones can really ramp up quickly. So we need to keep that in mind as well. So again, a reminder, tomorrow I will be doing our very first version of this, more of a prep, like I said, though, live, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I'll start the stream up at probably 9.55, I do it over Zoom, and then the Zoom sends it to YouTube because I've got the Zoom Pro platform or whatever, and yeah, a couple minutes to let people come in the door, so to speak, but it's going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be a Zoom meeting. I'm just sending it through Zoom, and uh, I'll get on, and we'll just talk, you know, much more informal, kind of look over at the comments. What is Bob saying? What is Jane saying? Whatever, and um, or screen names like, you know, Highway 53 LLL or whatever, right? <laughs> you never know what you're going to get with some of these screen names. But the point is, live tomorrow. And then before I even do that, we're going to start with these little quick updates that I'm going to do. And I can pepper those throughout the day. So be sure to check those out on uh, Twitter. Like I said, I know it's X, but I call it Twitter. Uh, YouTube Shorts and Instagram. And I know we got TikTok with like a billion and a half people on it, but I tried TikTok once. I can't deal with it. And I'm missing out on a huge segment of the population. I know. But let's try these other three first and see how it goes since we are trying something kind of new. You know, normally I just do these updates once a day and we got to get more Mark Suddeth out there because I'm always looking at this stuff and I just think it would be good to bring you in on that even if it's just a little bit more and it doesn't take a huge effort so I don't have to miss out on family stuff or whatever. I'm not lazy, but I don't want to spend 12 hours a day obsessing over this stuff. But every time something comes up, that I think you should know about, we certainly have a way to do it and get the info to you quickly. All right? So don't forget, seriously, on YouTube, subscribe first, hit the like button. Yeah, it helps with the algorithm, sure. But the most important thing, if you're already a subscriber, all notifications on so that when we go live, you'll know and you can come in and be a part of the conversation. All right? Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, all of us at Hurricane Track, our great community here. We appreciate your time and attention. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll see you again tomorrow.